So, um, really, the focus of my presentation is on two key actions within the, the Quali Build project, which are focused on training. Um, I'll skip through kind of the context of where Quality Build has come from and get into the meat of what we're, we're trying to do and uh, have started to do. Um, so I suppose that's the content, the why we're doing it, the what we're doing, when we're doing it, and what else we're going to do, and some conclusions at the end. Okay, so the why, um, you know, so you've got the context, the European Build Up Skills Initiative. Um, you know, it's mobilised uh, a lot of actors across Europe to look at this, this target group of construction workers, building construction workers, and how can we mobilise them to support the drive for near and net zero energy buildings. So in Ireland, we were put together a consortium to develop the Irish Build Up Skills Roadmap uh, under what was called Pillar One. Um, and that basically had well, I suppose two key outputs, a status quo report, so that was where we were at at the time, and then a roadmap of actions. Um, and the Quality Build project then follows on from that, where additional support was secured to implement actions that were identified in the roadmap. And uh, the consortium has come together to try and, I suppose, pick the key things that we need to move on and sought support from the European uh, Union to implement those. I suppose it's important to understand the context of where the roadmap came from. Um, it wasn't me or Mark Keyes or Tim O'Leary or various other people in the consortium that sat in a dark room and thought up these actions within the roadmap. There was a huge amount of consultation and engagement with stakeholders, with construction workers themselves, both at steering group level, at regional workshops. And I suppose it reinforced a number of different things and a couple of things that I just highlighted. Um, it was interesting that the Minister was talking about springboard and retraining construction workers. And one thing that came out of the Build Up Skills Roadmap is that there are approximately 60,000 construction workers out there that are building houses at the moment and they need training right now. And so we need to look at how we can resource that and address that gap. Um, Huge emphasis on retrofit over the last number of years with the decline in the new build construction sector. So, you know, the scale of those retrofit projects don't always merit the engagement of a designer or an architect. So the crafts worker plays an even important, more important role in that retrofit. So they are, you know, in a way providing advice to the homeowner and they really need to know what they're doing. And the other aspect was around trainers in the apprenticeship system, and the minister was talking about a, a revisioning of the apprenticeship structure. And again, through engagement, it's, you know, it was clear to see that the trainers that were delivering the apprenticeship programmes have a knowledge gap, that uh, they haven't been upskilled in the whole area of uh, low energy buildings. And so that was an issue that had to be addressed. So the roadmap, I suppose, we're, we're trying to look at, you know, what's the best approach in terms of implementation of the roadmap. And more and more through the discussions, this word of quality always kept coming to the top. Um, interesting, some research that was done by a master's student in LIT, you know, showed that a lot of construction workers were completely confused by the terminology, terminology about near zero energy buildings, green buildings, sustainable buildings, low energy buildings. When you start talking about quality, they knew what you were talking about. So rightly or wrongly, we've focused on quality as the driving force. And that permeates across the whole uh, activities that we've identified across quality build. So the first key issue was like, how do we address this knowledge gap? And a key point, I think, and I think Thorsten and other people would back this up, is that uh, a lot of the construction workers who went to Germany have really good skills. They just don't know how to apply them in the right way. So it's a knowledge rather than a skills gap in many ways. It clearly has to be a partnership approach and one of the big issues that we need to look at is, you know, we often come up with ways of looking at training and supporting and upskilling, but it was really important to figure out how we were going to finance this into the future. And that came across from discussions with the unions, with the employers, you know, so if we're going to look at training and upskilling, how are we going to pay for that? And then I suppose I commented on this issue of systems thinking. 
that came across again and again, not just in Ireland, but across <coughs> Europe, at that thinking of the building as a system, be it a residential retrofit, a new build, or a non-residential building, to think of it as a system and that each of the construction workers has an impact on that system was important. And interestingly, in the European discussions, I uh, had the opportunity, I suppose, to, to say that that system thinking is not just with the construction, the plumber and the electrician and the carpenter and the block layer working together. I mean, it means we need the architects and the engineers to work together and we need the policy makers to work together. So there is a complete macro and a micro system that needs to, to operate. So what we were looking at then is, I suppose, the, the first target group was the construction workers. And we had a lot of debate about how we would address this. And a lot of um, discussion on what was the most appropriate approach and there are lots of activities already going on out there. But the decision was taken, again, that really all construction workers need to get to a baseline, need to get this foundation. We picked the word foundation. So to train the existing construction workers and new construction workers on energy for low energy buildings. So within Quali Build, uh, our proposal to the, to the Commission was that we would train 200 construction workers, develop a training programme and pilot it to 200 construction workers around Ireland, evaluate it and refine it, and as I talk about later on, the plan is then to roll that out on a national basis. So in terms of the design of that, we had to look at things like how do we make it relevant to the construction workers? Um, how do we make it effective and scalable, given the fact that we want to be able to roll this out to 60,000 odd people, and to keep uh, updating it and developing it. Coming back to that point, it was more about knowledge and skills development, but trying to provide content to those workers that was engaging, that was valued. And the last point, I suppose, is important, is that it's accredited. So that's important for the construction workers in that they get a, a validated piece of paper to say that they've gone through an accredited program and they can add it to their CV. It also provides an opportunity for progression routes for those construction workers. And that's going to be important as the, the construction sector continues to change. We're going to need more and more construction workers that take progression and develop their skills and their expertise. So this programme is under development at the moment. So, you know, it's built around the concept of a three-day uh, series of content. Now that will, we're going to be, in terms of how we run it, we're going to be rolling that out in a number of different formats. But in essence, if you think about it, it's a, it's a three, day, three days of content. Um, and you see the content there in terms of the definitions and terminology. So trying to break that knowledge gap so that they understand the, the, the talk and the terms that are coming across when they're looking at low energy buildings. Trying not to bore them with regulations and rules, but they do need to understand those and have a concept of what uh, the different regulations mean in terms of their construction practices looking at building as a system, and then core energy principles in building physics. Then air tightness, building fabric, and thermal bridging. And I think Thorsten's point really, pick, presentation picked that up. There's a, a big difference in terms of the, the expectations that construction workers in Ireland feel and their responsibility in terms of air tightness, thermal bridging. Um, and that, that's a huge area that needs to be addressed. And then the, the final component looks at ventilation, heating systems, energy use in buildings, and low energy language again. Um, so we're not retraining plumbers to be plumbers plus X. We're not retraining carpenters. We're not retraining electricians. We're adding to their knowledge and improving their knowledge so that they can apply their skills appropriately. That's the focus of the Foundation Energy Skills Programme. So some of the keywords that are going to be uh, <coughs> Continue through it are the system thinking, systems thinking, attention to detail, comfort levels, so thinking about the users, um, quality building, air tightness, and controlled ventilation. And for many construction workers, this is all it's new terminology. You know, some construction workers have done bits of training courses here and there and they've taken uh, initiatives. But in general, the majority of the construction workers are learning a lot of this for the new for the first time. 
And then thinking about compliance, uh, we were talking about compliance here, communication. So try to get those electricians and the plumbers talking together and understanding why they can't drill that hole in that wall. Um, awareness and understanding. So the, the delivery methods are going to have a mixture of classroom content, group work, practical demonstrations, um, and engaging with content online as well. So multiple touch points for the, um, for the participants and trying to build it into an engaging way as well. So using video, using photograph, using methods that they understand and that deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So to do that, we need trainers that understand what they're delivering. Um, and there are trainers throughout the country, but in general, where we look at uh, the training of apprenticeship in particular, it was found that there was a gap in terms of construction training, in that things had moved in terms of building regulations and building technology, and these trainers hadn't upskilled. So how do we uh, address that? So we've developed a specific trainer trainers program. And again, this is not unique to Ireland, it's an issue across many of the European roadmaps that the trainers need to be upskilled. Uh, so the aim is to train 100 trainers in the construction training sector out there, but also in addition to that to develop a CPD system for those trainers so that there is a continuous progression route for them to look at uh, how they can upskill into the future. So again, this needs to be relevant, so it needs to be grounded and linked in with existing regulations and changes in the, uh, the apprenticeship structure. Accessible, so many of these trainers are working, so how do we deliver that training to them uh, in a way that they can access it and engage in it? And also to be updatable, because these trainers are going to have to continue to access uh, new aspects of training into the future. We wanted to look at issues of technology, so getting them to know the technologies and the new approaches and the terminology, but also look at new ways of training. In many ways, a lot of these trainers have been training the same way for a long number of years. And while that works up to a point, there are new ways of training and emerging methodologies of training. And that has been informed by best practice. So we're using a model for a blended learning program that has been developed by NUIG. Um, Mark Keyes and his team from IT Blanchestown have been to visit uh, a group in France who use a range of different training approaches and are also in discussions with the Build Up Skills team in the Netherlands. And we had a, a discussion with them about a week ago looking at their approaches. So exchanging best practice and information. So what, what's in the training program? Um, four key modules, building for energy performance, building fabric, building services, and the pedagogy. So um, focusing on the, the three core technical topics and then the pedagogical approach. So again, it's important that this is accredited, so it's a special purpose award. Uh, they get a certificate in training in low energy buildings that's been validate, validated by LIT and IT Blanchestown. And we're using a blended learning approach. So there are workshops and site visits but then that's supported by online content and uh, resource manuals that the participants have to go through, complete uh, assi assessments and assignments, and then th those are used to engage in the workshop discussions. Um, and it's, you know, for many of these trainers, this will be the first time that they've trained in this way. So um, it's, it's testing us to be able to deliver that and also testing them to be able to engage in training in that particular format. And Mark and his team, you know, again, taking the approach, trying to engage the user. So we're using graphics, we're using uh, our 24-hour plumber, uh, and those kind of approaches to try and engage the... Because in some ways, you know, the first module is on building regulations and policy. It's not so easy to make that interesting, you know, particularly when you're sending out a document for a participant that they have to read before they come to the workshop. And it's 60 pages about policy and regulation and part L and BER and DEEP. 
Germany Ireland soccer match. Read the manual. You're, you're going to be probably watching the soccer match. So you know it needs to be engaging. Um, and then there are progress ch checks for people as they go through the content to, to see how they're getting on. So the Train the Trainers program has started. Um, we have a target of 100 trainers. I suppose an interesting point to, to throw out for discussion is that a lot of the people that you would expect to be interested in this training from the Institute of Technologies and other training bodies, they are gone. They have been reassigned to other functions within their Institute of Technology or their training bodies because of the drop in the training and construction sector. And also the rooms that they had their, did their apprenticeship training in are now computer labs or tutorial rooms. So we do have a potential resource issue there coming down the track in terms of apprenticeship training into the future. And many of those people that have moved on have done upskilling, have trained, and now they're in a different role and they're not necessarily willing to go through a revolving door and come back into the system. Um, so we are training 50 participants at the moment. They've had their induction week uh, last week. I have two groups in Dublin and one in Sligo. And we will run then two further groups after we roll out the Foundation Energy Skills Pilot. So anybody here that's interested in the second run of the training, you can continue to apply online. And Mark, um, who's over here, can put his hand up. we would be happy to talk to you. The Foundation Energy Skills Programme, so the content for that has been finalised. Um, we need to get it validated, so that will happen by February of, of next year, with a start date in April of 2015. And we plan to do 10 groups, the target is 10 groups of approximately 20 participants, regionally divided uh, around the country. So three, approximately four groups in the Dublin region and the rest spread across the country. So try to make it accessible for people. We'll be using a range of different training approaches so we can evaluate the, uh, the impact of each training method and then make recommendations how this can be rolled out into the future. So within the Build Up Skills project, there are other things happening as well. Um, there is uh, obviously in the last year has been a move to create a register for the construction companies. Um, one of the proposals within our, within our work is that there also needs to be a register for the construction workers. Um, and there are lots of different registers out there, and lots of different systems that, could, that are being used. So SEAI have registers for particular aspects, NSAI have registered for particular aspects. There's you know, lots of different registers that uh, a building owner or building developer can go to look for, to look for qualified people. What we're looking at is see can we design and develop a, a comprehensive register that addresses all of those. This would be industry driven uh, initially, and that we will try to get up to 2,000 workers onto this registration system. So the development of this register has been led by uh, Tim O'Leary in DIT, who is in the building somewhere back here. Um, and we hope to be piloting that in 2015. The other aspect is communication. Um, so again, the QualiBuild can do a portion of the work. There's a whole the whole construction system, I suppose, needs to, is changing and will need to change. And one of the, the activities within the, the, the work group is, uh, or the, the project is to focus on this issue of communication and getting this issue of quality across. So lots of activity across the media, events such as this, and touching on that thing of trying to bridge that gap between the designers and the construction workers. Um, idea then that popped up at one of the discussions at the European level is this, this, these coffee meets, the 11 o'clock break on the, on the work site, get the architects, the engineers and the construction workers to debate around a particular topic. Um, and to try and do that in a number of different locations and see what the issues are, and try and have an open and honest discussion without a row. And I suppose the important part for us then also at the end of the project is a national rollout plan. Um, you know, I've been involved in 27 or 28 European projects and one of the difficulties often with them is you do the project, you do a report, 
the report sits on the Commission's shelf and it sits on my shelf and somebody else comes on two years later and does the same thing again um, or slightly different. So a key part of our project is the rollout. So, um, and Zoe was asking me how long the project is. We specifically designed it to be 33 months. So we will have a report to Minister English and other ministers in June of 2016 that will hopefully start to influence the budget. Uh, you know, so we need to be able to show them this is how the training should be financed. This is how the train of trainers should be financed. This is how we can integrate communication. Here's the registration system. This should be housed here. So that's kind of a core output for us, is to try and mobilise all of the actors to kind of move this thing forward. And that will involve a lot of consultation and engagement with the relevant stakeholders. Um, and so a lot of this stuff has happened already. I'm not sure if we'll have such a nice coffee for the coffee meets, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I suppose an important aspect of this is a lot of the partners have done a lot of consultation and engagement with other players. You know, so we are a group of organisations trying to implement this for the betterment of the construction sector, but we need to bring lots of different people along. So, you know, there are a steering group which represents lots of the stakeholders that you see on the screen here, and other people are engaging with the project through lots of different ways, um, and that is that is vital if quality builders to achieve its targets. So I suppose in conclusion, um, you know, it's clear to me that the build-up skills initiative that was started at European level is certainly meeting a need. You know, there are these group of people that had neglected in terms of energy research and development and training activities. Um, we do have an issue around knowledge versus skills and in many ways it's the knowledge, you know, I was talking to somebody over coffee, there are existing training programs out there, but people aren't going to them. Why? Because they don't need them, know they need to go to them. So how do we get across that gap? When we get them in, when they go to Germany, when they get into the training course, they go, okay, yeah, now I get it. But how do we get them in? Um, you know, we've tried to do everything in partnership and we're continuing that model, and I think that's the only way that it's going to work. Um, so Quality Build is really about taking the roadmap that reports that's sitting on the Taoiseach's and the Minister's shelf. Now we're looking at making it happen and challenging the Ministers and the policy makers that the, this needs to change. Um, but also, I suppose the sector needs to respond. So the, the training organisations, the construction industry, the policy makers need to be brought along with us and to respond to the challenge that we put up. And so far, that level of engagement has been very good. I think the next set of challenges will be, uh, will be making recommendations that will really challenge the status quo in terms of how these construction workers can be trained, how it's going to be financed, and the additional progression paths that are needed. And QualiBuild is doing four out of 12 actions within the Build Up Skills Roadmap. So one of the, the actions in the, the national rollout is pointing at people to say, that's actually your job to do that action. Um, so that'll be the fun discussions also. And maybe this is the vision that um, Thomas Armstrong, who's from the Control Road, so Building Control Road in Dublin, will eventually have, a, instead of a safe pass, he will have a, a quality build pass, which shows that he's done his health and safety training, his foundation energy skills training, and other relevant training. You know, do we have the ability to create an infrastructure that supports that, um, and make the construction workers part of the, the, the near zero energy building approach? Thank you very much. I'm here, obviously here all day. Um, can be contacted at any stage. And thanks to all the partners who are also in the room, they can be uh, targeted at any, at any time for questions also. Thank you very much.